Hello and welcome everyone to today's HLB International Tax Webinar, Navigating COVID-19 Governmental Tax Relief and Incentives. So in response to the coronavirus pandemic, many countries have implemented relief plans, including new tax measures to support businesses and the economy. So for this episode of our International Tax Webinar series, we're joined today by HLB tax advisors from across a number of countries to discuss the COVID-19 associated tax measures and implications, and to share recommendations for businesses and individuals operating internationally. So if I could um, ask our panelists to introduce themselves, and I'll start with uh, Andrew from Spain. Hello, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, my name is Andrew Bové and I work in the tax department of HLB Spain. Right, Carlos, if you could introduce yourself. Indeed, uh, thank you very much. Have a good day, you all. Uh, my name is Carlos Camacho. I'm a tax director of uh, Grupo Camacho International in Costa Rica. Christine, if you could introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Christine Tai from uh, uh, Shanghai HLB China, um, a, a tax partner of, uh, of uh, HLB China. Hello, my name is Lutz from Germany speaking. I'm a tax partner here in Germany from HLB Germany, working since 17 years on all arising tax issues. And hello, everyone. My name is Nick Farmer. I'm a tax partner at Menzies in the UK, and today I'm representing HLB UK. Hello, Pascal Schierda speaking. I'm a tax partner for HLB Netherlands, and I'm working on international and domestic taxes. Good morning, I'm Shannon Lamont, international tax partner with HLB USA. Great, thank you all. And I'm Andrea Mosey from uh, HLB. I'll be moderating today's panel. So we have um, all of our tax advisors on the panel today. So if you do have any questions that you want to pose to them, please use the chat box to ask your questions. We'll have some time at the end of the session, or if if you do have some uh, some questions that you want to raise kind of during um, during the session as each panelist is talking then feel free to just um, use the chat box and I will pass those on to to the panel so with the spread of COVID-19 it's obviously disrupting businesses around the globe and as the crisis continues businesses need to be agile in managing the tax effects of, on their business so while tax filings and payments may already be front of mind, other international tax areas require consideration. And multinationals are especially challenged with a complex web of legal and administrative changes happening around the globe. So what we want to do on this webinar is to kind of introduce the tax relief legislations and give you an insight into what uh, steps you need to be taking um, and what things you need to understand in order to be, take, be able to take advantages of these changes. So if I can start, one of the first questions that a lot of businesses are faced with at the moment is just understanding kind of the overall tax relief legislations that are not only happening in the countries that they're operating in, but the countries that they do business with. So what I would like to ask our panel to give an overview of are the latest um, COVID-19 tax relief legislations in, in their countries. And, and Andrew, if I could start with, uh, with you and what's happening in Spain. Thank you very much, Andrea. Uh, it is so that Spain sadly has been hit pretty badly um, with the COVID-19 virus. Uh, within the European Union, Spain has had a pretty high number of infected people or people that died because of the COVID-19. And because of that, the Spanish government uh, sadly has not reacted very effectively with all the different economic and now entering into the tax measures. And they have been issuing 
new legislation on a weekly basis and sometimes changing uh, measures that they provided a couple of weeks ago. So what we're going to try to do is summarize very, very briefly these measures. Um, in Spain, we can classify or group these measures in three different ways. Number one, what we like to call cash measures. So basically measures that affect the payment of taxes. Second group of measures would be everything that has to do with compliance and filing and submission of tax statements. And the third group of measures has to do with um, tax audits or litigation procedures. Uh, focusing in the first group, every, everything that has to do with um, cash measures, so paying your taxes, um, the tax authorities, one of the, let's say, the star measures was trying to extend the payment of certain, of certain taxes, uh, but this is only available for small and medial enterprises. So companies in 2019 had a turnover below 6 million euros. This extension is up to six months um, and it can be available only for small and medium enterprises. Then there's other extensions in assessments carried out by the tax authorities. Also in the customs for imports of goods, uh, small and medium enterprises can also benefit from um, payment extensions. But again, these measures are only focused for small and medium enterprises. For filing obligations, the second group of measures, um, until now the tax authorities did not uh, approve any specific measures. However, 10 minutes ago, literally, uh, the Minister of Finance came out saying that for small companies, meaning under 600,000 euros, the filing extension, the filing deadline is extended to, to May. Apart from that, no other filing obligations. That means that all multinational companies with some sort of presence in Spain are obliged to file on time their, their tax statements. And depending on the size of the subsidiary or the branch in Spain, they will be able or not to uh, postpone the payment. The last group of measures having to do with tax audits and litigations. Basically what the tax authorities are trying to do is postpone for a month, a month and a half, anything that has to do with tax audits, as well as filing any appeals or any writs. Um, and those are the three main, those are the three main measures. I'm, I would like to pass on the word to my colleague, uh, Carlos Camacho from Costa Rica, please. Yes, thank you, Andrew. Uh, yeah, for Costa Rica and the Central American region, the uh, most of the uh, measures are being concentrated on deferral on payment on indirect taxes, meaning VAT, and uh, importation duties. Uh, those are going to be uh, waived to be paid on a deferral basis for the months of April, May, June. And uh, the governments uh, are following a module in Central America that is quite optimistic in the sense that they expect the recovery to start as soon as June, which uh, to the view of every every uh, verse uh, economist uh, is a quite optimistic view. Uh, in fact, just uh, before this seminar, the IMF was releasing uh, news regarding the outlook of this crisis can, can be not only unforeseeable, but uh, long uh, for sure. And this deferral on payment of these three months of indirect taxes uh, is uh, going to become due by the month of December unless you have an agreement to have an extension on the referral before October 15. Uh, you may enter into an agreement with tax administration uh, to pay on uh, installments uh, starting June, uh, January uh, next year, but that's going to be it. Regarding the um, uh, waiving of uh, cash outs, meaning the 
payments that are uh, being waived uh, basically is one of the quarterly uh, payments on account for income tax. This is the one that is becoming due on June 30 uh, in the cash out from the government to uh, individuals. There are programs already running for uh, minimal uh, cash into the pockets of uh, end consumers. Uh, consumption in general is becoming challenged uh, as a result of unemployment uh, increase. And of course, this is uh, also beating the uh, tax collection uh, from tax authorities. The latest uh, on the relationship between uh, tax administration and tax authority and taxpayers is the fact that they have stopped for two months the procedures of uh, tax audits, those that were on, on the uh, course already, and those that may begin after uh, June the 30th. Again, uh, quite a scenario. Uh, everything seems like uh, they, they expect to have a recovery in the economical side and the regular business uh, activities by uh, no later than June the 30th. All right, thank you, Carlos. Uh, Christine, what's um, uh, happening in Shanghai? Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, as as you might all know, that China was is the first country which which was hit by uh, COVID nineteen heavily. So actually, in in ju late January and the, the early February, uh, all China was was actually slowed down and uh, Wuhan city was completely uh, quarantined for 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 uh, 80 days so the, the good news is uh, uh, la last wednesday wuhan was reopened um, yeah this is really a uh, good news to china and uh, and the, the chinese government uh, now is thinking about to uh, maintain the normal operation and to resume the work as 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 much as possible. So so in in February, uh, our, our government announced a series of uh, tax relief legislations and also other financial supporting measures in order to uh, support for the uh, 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 work resumption. Uh, the majorly uh, those those policies are divided into four kind of categories. The, the first category is um, uh, the government announced uh, some tax policy to support the, the, the campaign against the virus, including uh, uh, China exempt uh, VAT for the income of uh, revenue uh, arising from uh, from transportation of PPE or equipment or other equipment materials uh, to fight against COVID-19, and also uh, 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 if the company is uh, engaged in public transportation, courier service, or those uh, daily ne necessity services, the 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 relative uh, uh, income was uh, VAT exempted. And also, uh, Chinese government exempt uh, customer duty and import VAT for those uh, imported epidemic containment products. Um, uh, and the second uh, category for the tax support policy is uh, uh, the government wants to support uh, for 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 those uh, uh, enterprises which is. Uh, producing key products for containment and treatment of uh, COVID-19. For example, um, uh, those manufacturers uh, uh, can apply for VAT input refund uh, newly incurred in 2020, and also uh, uh, th those uh, those enterprises can uh, carry forward their tax deductible losses uh, for uh, 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 to eight years instead of uh, previous uh, five years. And uh, the, the third category is that the, the government uh, released some uh, uh, tax 
policies to encourage donation and charity activities in China. Uh, so, so, so uh, it announced that all the donations, uh, no matter from enterprises or from individuals, uh, those donate donations are fully deductible before uh, individual uh, the, the tax taxable income uh, for corporate income tax or individual income tax. Lastly, uh, they announced a, a lot of uh, tax re relief legislations to support uh, work uh, resumptions. And especially the, uh, the policies are intended to support SMEs to get through the difficulties caused by uh, COVID-19. For example, um, for small, small scale VAT payers, uh, the VAT rate it decreased from 3% to 1% in March to May 2020. And also, um, and also uh, the, the government lower the, or waive the social security contributions of companies for, 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 uh, from March to, to, to June to lower the burden of uh, uh, small and medium-sized com companies. And also, uh, 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 the government also asked uh, for the state-owned landlord to to waive or decrease their their rental uh, to uh, uh, collect it from uh, SMEs. So, so uh, these are the Chinese government uh, uh, policies granted to to normal business in order to recover. Uh, from the from this disaster. Yeah. Thank you, Christine. Uh, Lutz, could you uh, give us an in introduction into what uh, Germany is doing? Yes, um, I can. Um, and I'm very impressed of what China has done in order to um, improve the tax situation for the covered of the, the affected uh, companies, because Germany more or less concentrated uh, on the direct financial situation of uh, the companies by uh, strengthening or improving the liquidity by uh, granting loans and uh, securities and so on. So um, the tax measures of Germany um, are a bit reduced um, as far as um, no tax payments need to be done by the end of the year. At first instance, um, it's covered for all income taxes as well as to be paid by private individuals as also by by companies and um, so uh, there is a there's an there is improvement on uh, the the liquidity by the companies and so far um, this also includes especially prepayments um, because in germany the situation is that um, the tax payments are based on the income of the previous year. So of course, um, in the previous year, when everybody was earning well, um, nobody was thinking about um, COVID-19. And so the prepayments for 2019 based on 2000, uh, 2020, based on 2019 are quite high. So um, these prepayments can be reduced or even set by nil if um, the earnings of the companies or the self-employed persons um, are decreasing um, as a consequence of COVID-19. Um, as another tax measure, no enforcement will take place. So tax is already due. So which should already have been paid to the authorities will not be asked to pay any longer. So also up till the end of the year, the German authorities will not ask taxpayers to pay still due pay, uh, to uh, the due taxes in order to have them um, a bit easier by um, surviving these uh, um, serious these serious times. And um, not only businesses are in focus of the German tax authorities, but also the private individuals, so the normal workers, because it's allowed to pay a bonus or a benefit beneficial payment of up to 1,500 euros without any wage tax or social contribution. So um, that's, uh, let's say, some sign to the people, especially working in the sectors like healthcare and so on, to give them some, um, some uh, gift uh, by uh, doing the work in these hard times. And um, thank you, Lutz. It's Nick Farmer here from Menzies in the UK, and it's very interesting to hear about the German changes um, and those in the rest of the world that have been mentioned. 
there's definitely similarities, but quite a few differences as well. Um, the UK is one of the countries that's probably been most severely affected in, in Europe. Uh, we're currently under um, significant restrictions here not to travel, only key workers allowed to, uh, to travel. Um, so it, it's very much affecting business in the UK. And the, the main measures coming from government are really firstly to protect employment. And, and I think we'll get onto that in, uh, in a following slide. They've put in measures to help with the funding of business and guaranteeing funding payments, um, looking at making some significant changes to and delaying tax legislation that was going to be introduced. But probably the main one and similar to uh, South America um, is actually the deferment of taxes. Um, this has been quite a significant tool that the government have used in the UK. Um, and I think they're very supportive of the fact that companies need to pay their staff and pay suppliers first um, to try and keep as many businesses solvent as possible. So the sort of measures that we have in the UK are firstly, um, for all business taxes, it's possible to put in place time to pay arrangements um, by calling up um, the COVID-19 helpline uh, and putting in place um, delayment of business taxes with HMRC. Um, there's automatic deferral of VAT payments. So any payments that were due between the 20th of March and the 30th of June will automatically be de uh, delayed until um, the 31st of March 2021. Um, that effectively means that the first VAT payment that's due will be for the quarter ended 31st of May, where the payment will still at the moment be due on the 7th of July. Um, looking at income taxes, which I know Lutz, you mentioned in Germany, we have similar measures here. There would have been a payment that would have uh, been due on the 31st of July, and this is automatically deferred um, to the 31st of January next year for individuals um, filing self-assessment tax returns and that would also cover uh, partners in a partnership. Um, we've also seen um, business rate relief come in for businesses um, in the retail, hospitality and leisure sector um, and there has been a recent announcement at the weekend actually in order to uh, defer payment of import VAT and customs duties which may be due tomorrow, uh, quite short notice, but possible for businesses if they're un under a duty deferment scheme to again phone up the uh, COVID-19 helpline and get those payments delayed. Um, I guess slightly different from Spain is that there aren't any kind of compliance obligations that have been um, deferred. So even though we have deferment of tax payments, actually all compliance obligations remain. So VAT returns need to be filed, business tax returns need to be filed, personal tax returns need to be filed. So the filing obligation remains even though the, um, the payment of tax may be um, deferred. So I think that's probably the main tool to talk about at the moment. Thanks Nick. Uh, Pascal, could you give us an update on the Netherlands? Yes. Uh, thank you, Andrea. Um, the focus of the Netherlands has been in uh, keeping uh, employment as much as possible. Um, so the focus has been on drafting legislation that would be uh, granting subsidies to businesses and uh, subsidies to small businesses. Um, so not specifically a tax uh, tax issue, but it has, of course, tax consequences. Um, the speed in which this legislation has been made has been uh, very high, so I think very recommendable. Um, the effect has been that we see changes, a lot of changes and following on changes almost daily. Uh, so it is hard to keep track and it's hard to know what the obligations and requirements are for, for example, for when you file for these um, uh, regulations but that's a bit of a um, a bit of a puzzle sometimes what I think the most important 
um, question or matter is, is that uh, there has been a swift response from the Dutch government and that uh, would be recommended. Um, so the subsidy is um, in, in, in the wages, uh, the wages. Um, businesses can get a subsidy up to 90% of the wage of the wage bill. Um, and um, that is for a business who employ people and are active within certain um, certain fields of business. Uh, businesses which are hit the most hardest in this uh, in this period. So uh, leisure, restaurant businesses, uh, etc. And business with the seasonal pattern. Um, and which are hit by the fact that you cannot go outside freely. Um, on the tax matter, um, we see that um, the cash management has been a large part of that. So deferral of tax payments for the next three months um, almost all taxes are covered except dividend tax. Of course, we don't want to stimulate dividend payments, so uh, that is something that is not being deferred. Uh, the second thing is that um, interest on tax payments has been lowered to 0.0%. And that's also for all taxes, national taxes and uh, lower taxes. These um, tax payments also imply that the filing obligations are still in place. So you need to file timely your corporate income tax or your wage tax. Uh, there has been no um, loosening the rules on the compliance part. And the argumentation of, from the government is that they want to see what is happening with the workforce, for instance. Yeah, they want to still want to receive the wage tax uh, returns in order to uh, to make their predictions. Uh, another part of the regulations and the speed in which these regulations has been put in place is that uh, applying for the regulations and the, the, facil the facilities is uh, very simplified. There is n almost no check up front. All the checks will be done at a later date. So the government accepts that this might take some misuse of the regulations, but they accept it uh, for the sake of speed. Other uh, tax matters we saw in uh, the banking crisis in 2008 uh, have not put into place up till now. So it's mostly uh, a subsidy on wages and some leniency in the, the tax payments department. Great, thank you, Pascal. Um, Shannon, could you um, give us an update on what's happening in the US? Yes, thank you. Um, the U.S. just recently passed uh, the CARES Act, which provides $376 billion in relief for American workers and small businesses. Uh, for businesses, the tax return and tax payment deadlines have been moved from April 15th to, to July 15th, uh, the same for individuals. In addition, um, under tax reform in 2017, net operating losses were no longer allowed to be carried back. That provision has been changed so that net operating losses generated in years 2018 to 2021 may be carried back to the five preceding tax years. And also it removes the 80% of taxable income limitation restriction. So companies that are generating losses with previous um, income years can file claims to get cash back um, uh, very quickly. The interest deduction limitation, um, which was set to 30% uh, of adjusted taxable income has been changed to 50%. And also for, um, 
for individuals, the tax, uh, they will be receiving a stimulus check of up to twelve hundred dollars, um, and they're they're allowed a three hundred dollar without um, deduction for charitable contributions without having to um, itemize. Um, in addition, the um, under the CARES Act, there is a uh, it, it's called a PPP loan, uh, which is available for companies who have less than 500 employees. It's essentially a very low um, interest rate loan, which many of our small businesses will be eligible for. Um, that program has um, just really opened. It's very new, um, which is allowing companies to get instant loans or very quick loans uh, to um, help with liquidity needs. Great, thank you all. Um, so now moving on, um, we talked about uh, some of the workforce laws that uh, have come into place and with many internationals now looking at provisions to protect their employees during this pandemic, uh, they want to ensure that they're taken care of both now and in the future. So um, what are some of the, I know some of you have mentioned them, but what are some of the implications uh, related to things like workforce relocations, uh, remote, remote working, uh, disaster relief and payroll tax credits? Um, Lutz, if I could start with you, because I know Germany have um, some specific tax provisions in place now. Yes, one of the main issues, uh, issues or uh, measures um, the German uh, um, authorities um, uh, have taken is, of course, short time working here in Germany. So employees still get between 60 and 70 percent of their normal wages um, from the federal state uh, in order to keep them in the position to pay for rents and for daily living and so on. And in most cases, um, the um, the remaining 30% then gets paid still from the employers in order to take care of their workers. So let's say clearly the majority of the German employees still are in a quite economic good situation, even if of course uh, things are not as good as they were in the in the last in the last year, of course. Um, the main point is that these 70% short time work wage, um, which is taken over from the German federal state, is free of wage tax and free of social security contributions. So um, it's, let's say, a net amount which um, is received by um, the employees. Um, and on another side, uh, the employees can benefit from tax provisions if they work from home instead of using their office. So if they use a private room at the private house or uh, in the private flat um, for um, for their daily work, it's possible to set off costs which are um, caused by um, this special part of the work of the of the home um, from their um, earnings, so reducing um, the uh, the tax burden further, in order to have it a little bit uh, better um, for them to make it attractive working from home, because it's very important uh, in in these times that um, employees stay at home but still have the possibility to um, do their daily work. Um, Yes, and uh, of course, we also have um, the possibility to give donations on the welfare sector, which uh, allows it to reduce uh, tax payments um, uh, by setting off the donations uh, from the um, income tax assessment basis, which means uh, that up to a certain amount, such donations can be um, uh, can reduce the tax burden. Um, if the uh, threshold, which is 20% of the normal daily, uh, annual income, um, gets exceeded by the donation, this donation does not get lost. Instead, it's carried forward to the next years um, so that even the uh, income of the future years can be reduced um, and also the tax burden can be reduced by such donations given to, let's say, welfare sector. Thank you, Lutz. Um, with uh, job retention schemes, uh, Carlos, you uh, spoke about um, some of the things that are happening in Costa Rica. Could you elaborate? Uh, yes, absolutely. There are uh, certain measures uh, taken in order uh, to reduce the likelihood of unemployment in Costa Rica. And basically, that is to do with the flexibility of uh, 
the uh, working time in the companies. And most of the people, in fact, is working from home. We do have uh, recent legislation prior to COVID-19 that uh, allowed uh, companies to make use of intensive uh, home uh, work. So basically, this, this was good that that was in place in order to uh, get uh, ready for this, this kind of situations. In fact, the uh, likelihood of the uh, employers to reduce the uh, number of hours and in accordance with the number of hours, the uh, wages related to uh, the workforce are allowed in the case that the company itself is reduced its income for 20% of more or more. The companies are allowed to reduce the wages and number of hours up to 50%. And in case that the uh, reduction of uh, income exceeds 60%, the uh, reduction of the uh, labor time and wage is allowed to be up to 75%. This was mainly deemed to uh, subsidize the case of uh, tourism. We face the entering into COVID-19 during the highest peak of our high season in the industry of uh, hospitality. So. This was a major event for Costa Rica, which is uh, a very important component of uh, its uh, GDP, the tourism uh, income. Therefore, this was extended not only to tourism, due to constitutional matters. Therefore, it was extended to any other en uh, entity that may have reduced its income up to 60% uh, or more. Thank you, Carlos. Um, we've had a few questions come in, um, one which leads quite nicely onto the point about global mobility. This is uh, asking uh, Nick Farmer in particular. Uh, the question is, up to now, um, are there any measures, um, tax or others, um, provided for the hospitality learning business in the UK? Um, I'm thinking in particular about schools and organisations that used to welcome thousands of students from abroad, especially in the summer period. Okay, well, let me uh, pick up on that one in a, in a minute. Um, first of all, just to um, come back to the point that you were making before about job retention schemes, and that, mm. that is a significant tool which the government are, are uh, using here, and it's one which we are consulting heavily with um, business on at the moment. Um, this is going to be quite an expensive um, uh, provision from the government. It's estimated, I think, in the UK that broadly about 9 million people will end up uh, being paid through this scheme. And it's going to cost our government somewhere in the region of about £40 billion for the next three months. Just to give you a, a few figures on that, if you look at one of the biggest employers, British Airways, they're currently putting 30,000 people through this scheme. So, you know, there can be some uh, significant amounts of staff that will end up um, being paid through our job retention scheme. Uh, and one of the key factors is that all businesses are eligible. So it's not just for smaller or medium sized businesses, all businesses um, are, are eligible to make use of this scheme. Um, and it's really where they would have, where they've got no work for staff at the moment. Uh, and rather than making them redundant, they um, effectively, uh, for, for use of the, the technical phrase, they put them on furlough um, and the government will reimburse 80% of the wage cost um, up to £2,500 a month. Um, a couple of points on that that are, are worth mentioning is that that's a grant that comes to business. So the business gets the grant and then they use it to pay the staff. Um, that grant itself will, in due course, be subject to corporation tax or, or business tax when, when uh, uh, as part of its income, so it will be taxable. Um, and, you know, it's, it's available for any employee that was on the payroll at the end of, uh, of February. Um, so we're expecting this to have a large uptake from, from businesses. Applications haven't gone live yet. They'll go live on the 20th of, of April. Uh, with claims being able to be backdated to the 1st of March. 
And I think similar to uh, a point made in the Netherlands, um, they'll be looking to get payments out quickly to business, but it's highly likely that this will be subject to audit um, after claims have been made. So it's, it's really important that, that businesses actually retain the evidence um, that the, these payments did need to be made to their staff. Um, there are similar schemes here also from a, a self-employed uh, perspective. So if somebody is self-employed there and they earn less than £50,000, they can also get um, a maximum payment of up to £2,500 per month uh, for the next three months. Again, the issue there is that payments haven't uh, uh, started to be made, the systems aren't in place yet, with the first payment likely to be made by the uh, the end of June. Um, one point for any sort of senior executives, directors, one of the things that we're seeing is that people are looking to perhaps reduce down their uh, remuneration or waive their remuneration. And there's actually, in the UK, there's actually some quite strict rules around this. Uh, um, the, the waiver or the reduction must be taken in advance of the payment being earned. And actually, if they um, waive a payment that's already effectively been earned by them, then that can itself still be, uh, be taxable. Um, just coming on to perhaps some of the points around the question here in relation to uh, mobility and, and people um, coming into the, to the UK. Um, certainly, what, one of the things that we're seeing is that people may be in the UK for longer than they would would expect and um, our tax provisions are quite closely drawn as to um, how long people spend in the UK, whether they're, they're taxable here. So there's been a relaxation around these rules in terms of residency um, and if people are here for exceptional circumstances uh, and not able to leave the UK, then potentially they, they won't become resident here and, uh, and taxable in the UK. But, that itself will be subject to some quite careful record keeping and also um, a claim needing to be, be made. And then again, if you're in the hospitality and leisure sector and you've got people coming into the UK, it, it may have been that you were making use of some of our, our schemes here. We have various schemes where people may be taxed under two systems and you may have put in place agreements with our tax authority, which will mean that actually, um, they're only taxed on the share of their income which they're, they're earning in the UK and if they're staying here longer it may be that some you know, that balance has been changed or it may be that there were certain um, relaxations that could have been applied for under the um, uh, a short-term business visitor scheme that we have um, and, and again um, how the day count works on that and how the thresholds work will be things which all businesses, including those in the um, hospitality and leisure sector, will need to look at in terms of their employees and how long they're spending in the UK and what reporting um, comes from it. So quite a lot of changes actually around workforce laws and the way that job retention and global mobility are actually um, being affected um, and the relaxations that are coming through there the tax system. Great, thank you, Nick. Um, conscious of time, so I'm going to move on to some of the multinational challenges, and it also leads me to, we've had a few more questions come in. So with multinationals, um, they're especially challenged uh, at the moment with this complex web, uh, complex web of the, the legal and administrative changes that are happening happening around the, the globe. And so for those that were all, operating in what was already a complex environment um, they're now you know trying to do more with less as the public health situation uh, weighs in on the economy so what are some of the biggest uh, tax challenges that multi um, multinational companies face um, you know going back to some of your comments about the speed of change um, restrictions um, and particularly cash flow needs and things um, Pascal maybe if I could start with you Yes, thank you, Andrea. Um, well, for, for, for instance, only last Friday, uh, the Dutch and the German government, government issued a decree that um, 
um, for instance, uh, uh, cross-border uh, uh, personnel uh, living in the Netherlands, working in Germany, can uh, receive tax-free um, the, um, the government uh, grants they receive from, from working normally in, uh, in Germany. Uh, because the German rules are also based on protecting labor, but are very different from, from the Dutch rules. And the German uh, authorities pay uh, the grants directly, whereby the Dutch government pays the employer who, pay, who pays the employee. So the different uh, tax systems and the different uh, COVID grants or COVID schemes um, are causing these kind of uh, different treatments and thereby specific issues. Uh, so that's that's I think that's one example uh, which shows that um, oh, we have not one single market and one single set of regulations. Um, another um, thing that could be could be seen is that in the Netherlands, for instance, you have uh, specific regulations on the deduction of interest for companies. That is um, stemming from U European uh, regulations. Uh, but the thresholds are treated differently. For instance, in the Netherlands, you can deduct 30% uh, of your, uh, you can th uh, deduct uh, interest up to 30% EBITDA. Uh, now, in 2020, of course, we want to know what the EBITDA is going to be. Uh, but we have also a threshold of 1 million, whereby in Germany, you have a threshold of 3 million. So that's um, the same um, set of rules uh, stemming from the same uh, source, so to speak, but treated differently in a member state. And so that's making things so difficult and uh, uh, subject to review at a quite early stage. Thanks, Pascal. Um, Shannon, the personal restrictions on things like consumer-based businesses are having a, a, an impact. Um, what, is, what are you seeing from a US perspective? Yes, with the um, stay at home orders, it's had a very um, significant impact on um, on individuals and businesses. Consumer based businesses are definitely facing a slowing of sales um, as, and as even as consumer confidence declines. So many companies are offering huge sales, but individuals are reluctant to make purchases during this time of uncertainty um, and business to business sales of course have declined as a result the personal travel restrictions really does reduce the ability to manage supply chains as well and explore new business opportunities um, i did want to mention just going back to the um, the individual um, components of uh, tax measures. In terms of um, global businesses, one thing to keep in mind is that um, uh, companies with subsidiaries in the U.S. are also eligible for the PPP loan. Um, in addition, one thing that they um, may want to keep in mind is the payroll tax deferral, which is available for employers to um, defer the payroll taxes for employees uh, through that would be due through the end of this year and those payments can be deferred um, with 50% of the payment due in 2021 and 2022. So that will, could provide some additional liquidity. Um, in addition, there's an employer retention tax credit for up to 50% of wages. So a lot of, of the smaller businesses and, and um, companies that have subsidiaries in the US are focused on those types of um, schemes that can help with uh, uh, it, with uh, liquidity needs. Great, thank you, Shannon. Um, and Christine, we've actually had a, a question come in for you about, um, did the government in China regulate real estate rents? Sorry, for what? Did the government in China regulate real estate rents? A real, a real estate rents, right? Uh, yeah. yeah um, uh, in, in China, the government says that if if the company, if your landlord is uh, state-owned property, you know, uh, uh, properties, you can apply for for uh, to waive for the rent 
uh, for a certain period uh, around from February to to May. Yeah, uh, but if your landlord is a commercial uh, company, not stay owned companies, uh, you need to negotiate with your landlord to, to discuss if if the rental can be can be lowered or not. So this is this this is the current uh, situation. If I can just jump in from Germany, um, we have something similar, but this not only covers the state-owned um, facilities or so, but also especially privately owned um, flats and also business rooms. So um, each person who has rented um, um, rooms for either the business or even also the private living space has now um, the claim to ask um, the landlord to waive for rent payments up till the end of the year. So it's a bit... Um, uh, far further, the, the, the extent of the, re, the, the, the ruling is a bit um, wider than in China, as it seems. Oh. Great, thank you. Um, and we're fast approaching the uh, end of our time together. But So I just want to move, we've spoken quite a bit about the short-term gen uh, cash generation that is, that is available for businesses in things like deferments and corporate restructuring. Um, but I'd just like to, before we wrap up, just talk about the kind of uh, tax resilience that is um, ongoing. So obviously a major concern for almost all businesses at the moment is the um, economic impact of the coronavirus. And all of the tax and labour law reliefs are necessary um, in order to just kind of keep businesses and the economy going, not in just the present time, but for the future only. So. Um, I'll just ask some of the panel to share how some of their jurisdictions tax systems are playing their part in helping to alleviate the financial and the economic turmoil that is currently happening. Um, and Andrew, if I could start with you. Thank you, Andrea, thank you very much. Um, uh, yes, uh, the number one, it's important as some of our colleagues already pointed out that each industry, each sector, must be analyzed differently. Obviously, highly digitalized IT industries might be able to sort through this uh, crisis fairly, fairly well. Other industries very affected, like in Costa Rica, Spain, or other jurisdictions where hospitality and tourism can be a strong, um, strong industry, can be hit pretty hard. Going into how the how the how the government and other measures that can be applied, the good thing uh, that we're seeing is that although the measures are not being ideal, and could even be uh, better in the sense of uh, more people being able to benefit from these measures, is that the tax authorities have really really sped speed up in terms of communication and transparency in all this international tax world where we're seeing that more and more. Um, burdens and compliance work is thrown into uh, taxpayers and we're always asking for tax certainty and more collaboration with the tax authorities. Small parenthesis, please note that in Spain tax authorities tend to be very aggressive. I close the parenthesis. We are seeing in a very positive way how both social security tax authorities are really really trying to um, interpret send out interpretation because obviously there's a lot of uncertainty around the measures that they're approving uh and really, really trying to reach out to different tax associations cpa associations lawyers explaining how these different measures should be interpreted so there's a, a sense of of unity and all trying to uh pass through this crisis and the best way possible um so in that sense the spanish tax authorities Luckily, um, are, are, have improved a lot their communication skills towards the general public and in particular the, the taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Christine, would you like to um, share how the Chinese government is uh, improving their things for the future? Uh, I, I think Chinese government is... Uh, yeah, it is paying high attention to the uh, to the e economy, you know, uh, uh, changes because 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 obviously this this pandemic hits uh, 
China's economy very largely, uh, heavily, especially in the service, uh, in the sectors of service, you know, tourism, uh, also manufacturing, and also maybe tra trade sectors. So, so uh, the, the 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 Chinese uh, government, they uh, now they are actually they are reviewing the Ch uh, China's economy uh, on a very frequent basis, and they are continuously issue new uh, tax supportive policies to 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 help the the enterprises to get through the difficult times and we are, we are also waiting for our government to to issue more uh to more supportive measures to help especially smes because we do see that a lot of uh, you know restaurants and also hotels are are facing very difficult times and and uh, uh we, are, we are waiting you know that uh, uh in in april uh, our government will 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 held the the central government meetings so we are uh, we are all waiting for for the new uh, uh series of uh, supporting ta tax policies and other financial supporting measures to come out yeah thank you christina carlos yes i just wish to make a word of alert to all all the taxpayers that might be hearing this and is that uh, Every other government relief uh, that uh, we are talking about is going to be required to be paid somehow. Therefore, the likelihood of an increase after COVID-19 of tax audits and the increase of pressure in order to recover collections, uh, even uh, past income collections, is going to be very likely and is very important that companies, uh, while dealing with the crisis, also don't forget to keep an eye on uh, how to document well all the, their transactions in order to be subject to the scrutiny of an audit. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Um, and yes, we're a couple of minutes away from finishing, so I just want to thank all of our panel uh, we do have a few more questions, um, but we will answer those via, we will respond to you via, via email. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to get to them during the session. Um, and for any more insights and support uh, for businesses um, and individuals kind of navigating the cross-border business uncertainty that's been associated with COVID-19, um, the HLB website, we have a dedicated hub on there, which has all of the insights you may need. Um, and we will be regularly updating them with in insights from our tax advisors as well as um, other experts from across the HLB network. So feel free to visit that and um, get in touch with us um, at any time if you have any specific questions that you want answering from a, a, a global tax perspective. And so, like I said, it's, it's just for me to say thank you very much to all of our panelists and for all of you for joining us. Um, and we will see you next time for our next episode of our HLB International Tax Series. Okay, thank you. Stay thank well, you. everybody. Thank you. Keep safe. Yeah, stay healthy. Thank Bye. you. Goodbye, everyone.